Hi, this is Steve Nelson. This is part three of a three-part video on how to create a paper towel holder using Carverite Designer version three. We'll begin by picking up where we left off in the previous video. We're going to create the apron for the front of our paper towel holder. The final dimensions are going to be 13 inches wide and 2 inches high. But we'll be making that initial shape to start with 2 and 3 eighths inches high so we can use uh, the cut path tool to trim off the profile that goes around the edge. That's a 3 eighths profile. I reduced that down from a half an inch uh, from the one that we used on the side because I think the 3 eighths uh, looks a little better on a smaller board like this. It's a little more proportional. The board size is 16 inches wide and 4 and 3 eighths of an inch is high. That leaves a 1 inch border all the way around. It makes it convenient for a, an even number to attach things to should we need to. Let's go ahead and create that board by selecting new project here on my toolbar. The length 16 inches. The width 4.375 and the height of course at three quarters of an inch. Now we'll begin by creating a rectangle. So we'll select the rectangle tool here on the toolbar and just draw a rectangle on the screen. We'll use the sizing dialog boxes here in the in the toolbars to make it the size that we need. So we'll click on the length here and type in a 13 and press enter. Type in the width here and type in 2.375 or 2 and 3 eighths of an inch and press enter. Now we want this rectangle in the center of our board so I'll right click on it and select center and both. Now we want to remove that center constraint because later on when we uh, move these handles around a little bit it will interfere with that operation so um, let's just go ahead and remove it by right clicking on it again selecting center and both. By selecting all that again it removes the center constraint so this uh, box could be moved around if we needed to. Now we're going to insert some uh, vertices here on the bottom, three of them specifically, to create that shape that we uh, saw in the example and in the uh, finished project at the beginning of the videos. To do that it's easier to uh, snap them to the grid so we'll turn the grid on by selecting layout and snap. Set the grid interval for 0.125 now that may seem a little close, uh, an eighth of an inch is pretty small, but that's the measurement that we need to make everything line up correctly. We'll turn the snap objects to the grid on. We'll turn view grid on also by putting a check mark in the checkbox. We also want to make sure that view Bezier control points is on because we're going to use those. But we do not want to select center grid, so leave that unchecked select OK. Now the three vertices that we want to put along the bottom here is one from the three quarters of an inch over from each of the corners and we want to put one right in the middle. So we'll begin over here on the right hand end. We'll come over six grid spaces or three quarters of an inch and right click on the line and select insert vertex and as we had to do in when we created the uh, paper towel holder ends we have to zoom in close and move that vertex so it snaps to the grid and we need to make sure that uh, the line segment says 0.75 here. The next one we'll make is in the center. And we'll zoom in on the center. Now we know this is the center because it's a, a thin black line. This is the vertical center. 
There's a horizontal center on our board here too. But we want to use this vertical center and right click on our rectangle right at that intersection and insert a vertex. There again zoom in close and point to it with the mouse and just move it over until it snaps to the inter grid intersection lines. And the last one that we'll put in here on the line is over three quarters of an inch from the left hand edge. So we'll come over six grid spaces, right click, select insert vertex, and make sure it's snapped to the grid. verifying also that we have a 0.75 line segment here. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to move this center grid, or I'm sorry, the center vertex up six grid spaces, or three quarters of an inch. I'm going to point to it, hold the left mouse button down, and just move it up six. The snap to grid feature works pretty nice there to keep an accurate count. So what we've done now is altered the shape of our original rectangle a little bit, creating some pivot points here at three quarters of an inch, which is where it's going to fit over the front edge of the, the ends actually will be this wide here, so uh, we don't want it pivoting down here, it would look funny. And we're going to change these lines to curves, or what they call Bezier curves or splines. We can do that by right clicking on the line, and select form and spline. Now you can see the blue Bezier control handles that we're going to be using in a minute to actually create that shape. Let's go ahead and right click on the left hand line and change it to a Bezier curve or a spline also by selecting form and spline. Now we'll zoom in kind of close over here on the right hand line and we're going to move these handles. These are Bezier point handles. Now these handles do not snap to the grid lines. So you just have to kind of um, do it by eye. We're going to use this uh, grid line that's here, this one that's right, right behind it, zoom in here a little, as a guide line. And I'm going to move that control right to the edge of the board down down that grid line so it'll snap right to that it won't snap I'm sorry but you click and hold till you get the finger and move the blue point right straight down the line till you get to the bottom edge of the board and release the mouse button now close is good enough it does not have to be exactly perfect we'll do the same thing over here with this control point and we'll, but we're going to move it up to the center line here using the grid as a guideline. So we'll zoom in here a little bit so it's a little easier. We're going to use this guideline here. You get the finger when you point to the, the blue Bezier control point. Move up the grid line till you get to the center point of the board, the horizontal center there. And again, close is good. You're not going to be able to tell a few thousandths of an inch. We've got half of our shape created. Now we just need to do the same thing to the other points over here. So zooming in, we'll pull this one down to the edge of the board along that grid line. And we'll move this one up to the horizontal midpoint of the board. And there we have our shape kind of looks like a handlebar mustache, huh? Okay, the next thing that we want to do is create an offset, 3 eighths of an inch to the inside. Now we want to turn the grid feature off, and you could turn the snap to grid feature off using the, the toolbar buttons here, but that leaves the grid on, and I think with the grid uh, so tightly uh, uh, space there it might uh, it looks a little better if we just turn it off especially for a video where we're trying to watch to see what things are going and what they're doing so I'm going to go ahead and select layout and snap and uncheck the, the uh, two boxes there to turn the grid off and turn the snap off 
Now with that uh, perimeter selected that we just uh, made, I'm going to select my path offset tool. Now when I make this path offset, it does a pretty good job. I use this tool uh, quite often and it's a very good tool. I really like it. Now, but in this case here, what's probably going to happen when we make this is one or, or, or both maybe, but usually just one of these segments over here when it offsets is going to be distorted just a bit. But that's easily corrected in just a few seconds. So let's go ahead and select our path offset tool. It's going to create the path to the inside. We need to set the distance to 0.375 and then select OK. And as you see, it made the right hand one over here pretty good. In fact, that's just what we wanted. But the left hand side over here, it kind of dropped the vertice a little bit or the vertex a little bit. So what we need to do is to bring this up to exactly what this one is to make it identical on both sides. We'll zoom in here on this right hand side to see what it's set for. And you can see that the line segment is 0.375 and it is a indeed a horizontal line because we have the bar across it. So let's zoom out and then zoom back in over here on the left side and we'll click and hold on this vertex here, drag it up and then drag it out until we get 0.375 line length. I'm going to let it go there for a second. We're looking at this uh, blue measurement right here and I'm trying to uh, make the line horizontal and also make the line 0.375 inches in length. So bring it up just a little and over. There's 0.375 and there's the horizontal bar so I release the mouse button. Now I got lucky. That's pretty difficult to do to get uh, exactly 0.375 moving that with a mouse and it can be done you can see I, I just did it um, if you can't I wouldn't spend a lot of time on it if it's 0.374 or 0.376 it's close enough no one is ever going to see a thousandth of an inch it, do, it does need to, to make sure that it's horizontal here so uh, make sure you get the, uh, the indicator the bar at the top that it is a horizontal line that straightens it out pretty good in just a relatively short amount of time. So now while we have it selected, we'll go ahead and make it a carve region. I'll select the carve region tool here on my toolbar. We'll change the depth to 0.15. In the earlier videos we determined that dropping that pattern onto a 0.15 uh, height or depth uh, car region uh, makes the weave pattern look the best. While we're here we'll go ahead and set the bit optimization to best. If there is a feather, which there shouldn't be, you want to remove it. And since we're not going to use the, four fe the floor feather feature, since there is no feather, we'll just go ahead and uncheck that. That makes a really nice carve region that we can use to put our weave pattern in. Okay, we want to um, rename some stuff and make some copies and we'll do that by using the carve uh, list over here for the renaming. We want to uh, click on the perimeter, the, the first line that we drew, and right click on it and select copy. Right click again on the board and select paste and what that does is makes another one called rectangle here, uh, one right on top of the other. We're going to use one for the perimeter. But we're going to um, uh, apply the uh, corner sweep tool to, and the other one we're going to use for a cutout. So we'll rename both of those appropriately. So we'll right click on this rectangle here and rename it, and we'll call it perimeter for lack of a better name, I guess. press enter and we'll rename the next one down cutout makes it a lot easier to select later on should we have to come back and do some editing the offset every time we make a path offset it calls it offset over here so that can get confusing so I'm going to right click on that and rename it 
We'll just call it recess. You could call it carb regen or recess or anything that you like. I just picked recess for a name. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and select that perimeter again and we're going to apply the sweep tool. Now the, the sweep tool is the corner sweep tool that we need. You can see mine is set for the sweep rounded. So I'm going to use the downward arrow there, click on it and select sweep corner. That changes the tool to sweep corner here and then just click on it to select it. Now on the bottom part of the screen is our profile that we're going to use to create the round off on this uh, uh, profile going around the outside edge of our apron. Now the white line here is the representation of the white line on our screen and we want a half inch beginning a half inch to the inside of that uh, white line and we want to round it over to a quarter of an inch deep at the line. So looking at this here we're going to make an arc right here at three-eighths of an inch over and a quarter of an inch down on the line. And that's probably the easiest to do if the grid feature is on. So we'll select layout and snap. Snap the object to the grid and snap the object. Uh, we do not want to snap the object to the edge so we won't uh, click on that. But we do want to view the grid um, and we also this time we want to put a check mark in center of the grid. It helps uh, line things up with our white line in the top of the board. So let's go ahead and click on OK there. Zooming in a little closer you can see that the grid has lined up quite nicely with the points that we need. So I'm going to select the arc tool here on my toolbar. I'm going to come over 3 eighths of an inch and just below the top of the board I'm going to don't click out in the black area or it'll just create a, a vertex it won't start the arc so click on the board just below the top and when you click and release it's going to snap to the top of the board anyway because the snap feature is on move over to the white line and down two grid spaces and click and we're going to size that arc so the top of the arc stays below the bottom edge of the board or the top edge of the board and we'll use the handle here in the middle so to speak to click and hold until we uh, see this yellow box disappear that would indicate that the the arc is now below the top edge of the board so we'll click and hold drag down to the opposite corner and as soon as that box goes away release the mouse button now let's go ahead and turn the grid off Layout snap and uncheck the two boxes there and OK. And then select the OK button down here to accept it and create our profile all the way around. Did a nice job, didn't it? Nice profile all the way around. Nice border. So far, so good. You might want to save your work at this point so you don't have to go back and recreate all that again. Next thing we'll do is to drop the weave pattern on this carve region. So I'll click on the front view here so it orients everything to the front of the front view. I'm going to right click on the toolbar here and select pattern list to turn my pattern list on over here on the right hand side open up my favorites and in there is a folder called weaves and that's the uh, folder we created and uh, when we made the weave pattern in a previous video now you want to make sure that you uncheck scale to the board you do not want to scale to fit the board so uncheck that checkbox here at the bottom of the uh, uh, pattern list and then uh, select the, the weave pattern pull it over and just drop it on the board. Now I'm going to right click on that and select center both. Now when I made that weave pattern I made it a little over 12 inches not just short of 13 inches so 
um, it fits nicely between the uh, edges of our carve region there which works out very nice so I'm going to right click on that weave pattern and select clip carving and we're going to clip it inclusive that's not clipping to the correct carve region there I can, we, we know that we know we have to group that to, to make it look right but while we have it selected let's go ahead and set the bit optimization to best we want to remove the feather so remove the feather off of it and also uncheck floor feather <clears throat> now in order to make this weave pattern uh, correct um, first of all let's right click on it and merge it we'll merge it to additive and that drops it down so it's not quite at the top of the uh, the board which I think makes it look a little better in the end result here and then over here in our carve list going to make sure that weave is selected going to hold the control key down and make sure the recess is selected also we only want those two items selected and then group them and that trims off our weave pattern to the correct carve region it's merged and looks pretty good next thing we'll do is to create the cutout so we'll cut that off and remember we have to adjust the path of that cutout so it's down below uh, just right at the edge of our edge profile here so again I'm going to click on the front view to orient it to the front and I'm going to turn on the grid selecting layout and snap um, we want to uncheck snap objects to the edges if it is checked uh, we want to snap the objects to the grid and view the grid on the screen of course do not check center grid things line up better if you don't and click on OK now we can see that one of the grid lines lines up really nicely with the bottom edge of our profile so we can use that I'm going to select cut out over here in our in our carving list and the idea is to drop this corner down three grid spaces so it it's even with the top edge of our uh, profile there now since we made a rectangle to start with when I pull this down it's going to pull both sides down at the same time if we had used the uh, connected lines tool to draw the box rather than to actually use a rectangle then we could have moved these points independently of each other uh, this this one down then we'd have to move over to the opposite corner and move it down also but since we started with a rectangle it holds the rectangle properties so if we click and hold on that vertex there and just drag it down you'll see it uh, three grid spaces you'll see it move both sides so it's actually sizing the, the rectangle so to speak down by three-eighths of an inch you can verify that by looking at the uh, size of the box that it creates there as 13 inches wide and two inches in height and that's what we want so let's turn the grid off so it doesn't uh, interfere with anything so we'll turn the snap off and the grid then we'll apply the cut path to that so we'll select cut path tool here on the toolbar we want to the minimum number of tabs uh, left to five that's uh, what I like that's my default uh, the tab spacing uh, to three tabs per foot uh, the tab height to a quarter of an inch to make sure nothing breaks loose and flops around in the machine we want to make the maximum pass depth to 0.25 don't want to break any bits and we also want to flip that cut to the outside well, that looks a little better now we can go ahead and accept it and that looks pretty good in fact you can probably get a little better view if you hide the cutout you can do that in a couple of ways I've got a button here on my toolbar 
it says hide the cutout but you can also go back and edit the cut also and hide it with the hide button and there's our finished apron I think that looks pretty nice one last thing before we conclude is I want to mention the, the other two boards first of all the back the back board is just a straight board it goes between the rabbits on the ends of the paper towel holder and the back size is 12 and a quarter by 8 inches it goes in between the um, uh, rabbits as I mentioned so it doesn't come over the full 13 inches it's only 12 and a quarter the top is 14 inches by seven and a quarter inches and there again it's most easily cut on a table saw after you cut the size uh, do a round over on both sides on a router table much easier because you can't uh, it's, it's easier to round over just the three edges that you need rounded you don't want the back edge rounded over on either side of the top the one that fits next to the wall or one that's flush with the back of the uh, paper towel holder um, that has to mount to the wall and you don't want it sticking out any so you want that back edge flush and you don't want a, a round over on that at all and I find that much easier to do on a on a uh, router table than it can be done on the car right it, it's not that difficult but um, to just set the height on the, a router table and then run it around there or use a handheld router uh, either way you can do that. It's uh, both of them. I think are probably a little bit easier. I used a quarter of an inch roundover bit for mine, uh, and use it on both sides on on the three edges. That concludes this video. I hope you all have as much fun building this as I did. It's a lot of fun, and the finished project is is really awesome. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.